In this video, you'll learn the single best drill to feel how to move the body and club powerfully through the hitting zone. If you are staying down with that chest and back with those hips, you need to watch all the way to the end as tour coach Alex Riggs and myself are going to show you a drill that could change your game forever. Let's get stuck in. How was the extension on that one, Riggs? Through the ball about this section. Was it all right? Excellent. Fantastic. So let's work on players who need a little bit more of that in their follow through. We see a lot of them giving it up. This one here. Yep. Chest down, hips back, arms bunched. Definitely not the most powerful position to be in post impact. Correct. Now I saw scrolling your Instagram, lots of great content there guys to check out on Riggs Golf. We saw this drill where you had the club gripped down about halfway and you were working with a player and they had to match up a certain contact of the shaft hitting the side of their body as they extended through this lead side. Yes. Now, I've never seen that before. So I want you to go through in detail why this would be beneficial for a lot of players. It's helping players to understand really what release entails. Mm -hmm. And I, having them understand that release is just a form of unloading what we've loaded up. Okay. In our backswing, if you do that drill again, holding that golf club midway on the shaft. As we swing back, yeah. so we've loaded the golf club, we've got this angle here. We'll see this fantastic L position between the club shaft and that lead arm. Mm -hmm. So there's load here. Mm -hmm. As we then travel down through the strike, we don't want to retain this angle forever. Mm -hmm. If we did that, if we kept holding this forever, the golf club's never gonna make it to the ground. Yeah. The face is gonna stay open. Correct. Players, if they did find a way to strike it, they wouldn't hit it high enough. So yeah. learning how to create the unload, a great way to do that is actually to start firing the wrist to get this to smack the side. Okay. So gripping down so the hands are beneath the grip in itself. I'd probably go a little lower. Oh, even lower. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my torso is not there, is it? So address position. We're going to get into a setup. We're going to create this proficient backswing position. Nice little L-shaped structure there. Now my objective, when am I feeling that I'm doing this? Is it by the time that I'm almost pretending I'm going to whip the ball as such or? I'd split it into two parts. Okay. From that loaded up backswing position, the first thing I'd get you to feel is that you're going to put pressure down into that lead foot. Mm -hmm. As you're doing that, those arms are going to work back underneath you. Okay. okay. So let's say that it gets you somewhere around hands in front of that trail thigh. Okay. Now from here, the key is I want you to match up the extension of this lead knee. So that's mm -hmm. you straightening the lead knee with the unloading of the club through the arms. So we're timing that with that smack into your side. Mm, okay. So you're getting used to feeling that that lead knee is going to straighten at the same time that the club hits you. Yeah. Okay. So from here down into there, and then straighten and load up. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, you don't need to really go at yourself here, guys. <laughs> Save yourself some ribs and some explanations that you don't need to make. Now, as you swing to the top, coming down, we're trying to achieve, let's say, this section of the swing here is quite an important checkpoint. Hands relatively in front of the, the yes. back leg, shaft level with the ground. You can even match it up with the alignment stick that we've got there. And then from here, when we're pushing off this lead side rigs, we wanna make sure we're going forward, right? Am I doing that through the ball of my foot, through the heel? What am I doing? So when we initially put that pressure into the left foot, mm -hmm. it's going to go into the ball of the foot. Yeah. When you push back into the ground, that's when we're going to see that pressure move a little bit more into the heel side of that lead foot. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to do this too early from that position, otherwise you'll end up just spinning, spinning out. out. Yeah, so that can be a reference as well. I think simply having the outcome and the idea that when you do want to finish post second stage, that your hips are tucked or forward and towards the target, that will help a lot as well. Yeah, exactly. I think that is a unique position for a lot of golfers to get into. They're not used to having their hips be the most forward part of the body. Perfect. So let's say this is phase one of the drill. Now, we're not going to hit a golf ball like this. Do we just grip it normally and try and recreate a feel? What would you suggest? Exactly. Gripping it normally, trying to feel that, again, we're going to do that in the same way. So I would do the downswing in two parts. Good, so you got tons of pressure into that lead foot. Now from here, we're gonna time the extension of that lead knee with the extension of the arms and golf club, the striking of the match through the hit. Perfect, now players at home will see that I took a little divot there. 
that is intent if the ball was there is that important oh my goodness yes yeah uh, learning how to feel that we can have the golf club traveling down as the body works up this is a magical feeling that i think most of the golfing world hasn't yet discovered i was replying to some youtube comments last night and uh, one of the guys that works with me flagged about three or four exactly the same thing and it's a concept which i think is quite misunderstood a lot of players they go well if i want to hit down everything needs to go down well no <laughs> we've created some load on the golf club which is a shortening of this arc so then as i am pushing up and i let my wrists go and we create this whip effect as i am extending through the lead side and my arms are straightening as my body is going up i am hitting down and you can yeah. see the proficiency of that strike in the same point that's the compression that's the power we don't want to be down like this with our knees staying flexed and our chest staying down it's also more of a guarantee yeah okay we can only get the golf club so far away from us yeah so if we're always extending our arms that radius that distance is going to be the same every single time yeah. if we're traveling through impact and we haven't extended so we've got all this forward bend the elbows the low point's going to be random. They're mm. never going to have that compression. Okay, so look, I absolutely love this drill here, mate. Never seen it. I'm going to use it a lot now with my online coaching. Gripping halfway in the shaft, filling it up against my lead side, always mapping out that backswing. We've done a whole series of videos today, guys. I really advise you to check them out because it will combine nicely with this one here. Then moving and coasting back down into this stage one of the downswing, hands in front of the trail leg. And then from there, I feel all this pressure in the ball of my foot. I'm gonna push off that, allow my hips to tuck and time up the end of the grip, hitting the side of my body at the same time. I also love this as well because we start to maintain our tilts. Feels very powerful. Throwing. Exactly. All right, so one more practice swing. Let's hit a shot from there, down, up, That's making it. sure I'm hitting the ground. Got a good feeling about this one. That was magical. You like that? Thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs>